Welcome to Eldora Speedway for the Eldora Dirt Derby, the second crown jewel on the Mountain Dew Truck Series season. As you can see, uh, this is a dirt race. This is the only dirt race on the season, and obviously it is the crown jewel. We are going for 50 laps here on the dirt. Uh, up in Rossburg, Ohio. Now, let's see your pole sitter. Devin Fair in the 93 CMR Roofing Chevrolet Silverado. It is a uh, Robin Hood Racing 1-2 lockout with team owner Christian Russell sitting in second in the 39 CMR Roofing Chevrolet Silverado. Behind them in third is Mitchell Collins in the 79. Uh, for Railfan Motorsports, the uh, Turkey Hill scheme. This is the same scheme he won the DeVito Hub Clash in. Starting fourth, probably best run of the season so far for Jordan Stout in the nine. The Chevrolet Accessories Silverado here. They have not had the best run. They are currently sitting 15th in points out of 15 full-time trucks. So that is uh, for unfortunate for that team. Uh, behind him, Nathan Ormond in the 44 Hot Wheels Exalta Chevrolet starting 5th. And in 6th, Nathan Smith in the 48 Ally Chevrolet Silverado. And behind them, the, the part-timer, the 51 of Christian Holder Toyota Racing Development. This is the Toyota paint scheme. Uh, behind him... In the 07, your points leader, Patrick Sarr, in the uh, Phantom Splatoon 2 uh, Toyota Tundra. I'm, I've lost track of the uh, starting positions, but behind Star you have Arthur Xavier, your, Arthur Xavier, your Myrtle Beach winner. I had a rather disappointing outing at uh, Bristol. Uh, Xavier had the points lead going into Bristol. He came out sixth in points. Uh, lost the lead to Patrick Starr. Behind him is Mateo Kobayashi in the number 10 Nintendo Japanese Airlines or Japan Airlines Toyota Tundra for Rising Sun Motorsports uh, teammates to the 07. Bradley Ream, your there is your Bristol winner. Bradley Ream starts second. I mean not second. Uh, he starts. In whatever position in the 76 Uno Cal truck. Behind him, the uh, driver who finished second to Reem, Sebastian Dupain, in the 68 McDonald's uh, Ram 1500. Uh, and behind him, his teammate and team owner, Nottingham Scott, in the 86 Pedigree Machine. And behind Nottingham, you have both Michael Walter Racing trucks, the 40 of Ryan Benjamin. The Aaron's Machine, and then Roman Fenway in the 15 Famous Amos truck. And then behind Fenway, you have the only full-time Ford truck in the uh, final three spots locked out by Ford. Uh, Gray Galding in the 27 Panini truck. Cody Smart in the number 12 Penske truck rentals uh, Ford. Uh, and Logan Williams in the 17 Costco truck. All these drivers are part-timers. Uh, Gold, Gray Golding, Cody Smart, and Logan. Actually, no. Uh, Cody Smart and Logan Williams are the part-timers. Gray Golding is the only full-time Ford truck. Now let's go back to the front of the field uh, to go over your starting lineup. I mean, not your starting lineup. Your points. Actually, uh. We'll go over points later. Personally, uh, we'll go over uh, my pick to win. I believe Devin Fair starting on the front row. Uh, starting first, we'll have the best shot at winning. As the uh, the leader, in, uh, we did a test race here, and the leader uh, did very, very good. Drivers, start your engines. The pole sitter did very good in the test race. 
And uh, we'll see what if that will work. That's magic for Devin Fair. Now let's go over your point standings. They will not be shown on screen because I don't feel like doing that. I'm not the most energetic. Uh, let's get a better camera. But first in points is Patrick Starr on the 07. Second is Bradley Ream in the 76. Roman Fenway sits in third. Nottingham Scott sits in fourth. And Nathan Ormond rounds out the top five for points. Now the pace truck pulls on to pit road. That's a very hard corner. Uh, I believe I turned uh, yellow flags off. Here we go. Three flags on the door for the fifth. A lot shoot out here in the dirt. Uh, they are still side by side as they enter turn one. Down the back stretch they go. Devin Fair holding on to the lead. Uh, his teammate cannot get by him. Devin Fair clears him out of turn four and he will lead lap one. Um, my prediction, like I said, was that the leader. Wilson would take off, and we are seeing that here. Devin Fair has uh, taken off from the rest of the field so far. And, uh, here comes Mitchell Collins getting around Christian Russell. And the outside lane does not work. And Warren now trying to get around the 39. He moves the 39 high, or Russell just did not to get by, or Nor Ormond was there, and Russell could not get down, trying to get to that third place position. Jordan Stout also stuck on the high side. Uh, he's gotten down in front of Christian Holder now, the, and will hold on to the lead. I mean, that position, I believe it's, I believe he's currently in fifth. get a top five he is shown he is talented multiple times uh, coming from getting the pole at the Daytona race the opening race so that is a uh, very good it's very good for him get grabbing grabbing the pole however he could not stay up there and I'm not against Scott coming from the back he is not sure what position they're battling for right now. Uh, behind him, Roman Fenway. And in the 15, Br Bradley Green trying to catch up to him. Here, here's Arthur Xavier. He, uh, Cody Smart is trying to make the outside work. It's not looking like it's going to happen. Nathan Smith, two bad races in a row, it looks like. You could see him. Yeah, he is last. The outside just does not work, and he cannot get to the inside. Now, let's go back to the front. Devin Fair has just checked, off, checked out. Uh, Mitchell Collins is going to try and run him down, but we're not sure if he can. Uh, when you see Nathan Smith seven seconds behind Fair, uh, if you look up to your left, you're a... Uh, Top, right, top left of your screen, you can see the uh, final ten, uh, eight positions. But Devin Fair leads yet another lap. We are on lap 11 of 50. So far, Fair has been dominant. And like I said, cautions are turned off, I believe, so you will not see any cautions this race. He makes a mistake, maybe slides high. He's leading yet another lap. We could this could be another Bradley Ream story where they lead every lap of the race. I think uh, we have some very angry fans after this one not being able to see a good race according to them. Uh, one driver leading the whole whole thing. Uh, 
as we see, Nathan Smith has got around uh, Kobayashi. It's not a race unless you miss. A it's not a race here unless you miss a pass, and uh, we've missed one right here. Uh, can Kobayashi catch him? a lot of the corner. I mean, it is dirt, but... He's, Nathan Smith has not had the best season since his win at Daytona in the opening race of the season. Just has not had the best luck on him. He slides really high out of that corner. Uh, can Kobayashi catch him? Kobayashi does have the preferred line. He's going to close right in. Kobayashi to the inside. Once again, can Smith get the high side to work out of the corner? No, he cannot. He holds on to the position for for that lap. And here comes Kobayashi once again to win. I also forgot to mention, uh, we are no longer part of the World Offline Racing Association. We, we have moved to the International Offline Motorsports Association as a Wara has shut down. We are part of I Ioma. I I'm not sure how we're gonna I'm gonna pronounce it Ioma, I guess. But the International Offline Motorsports Association. Nathan Smith can not catch the heat. Just does not seem to have the truck. through the field, no battles. Nathan Orman is really trying to protect Russell. It's been, it has been a dream for uh, Christian Russell. He's definitely done the best out of the drivers who started on the outside. Uh, he's been able to hold on to the top three all day. Through turns three and four, uh, it's going to be lap 22 for Devin Fair when he crosses the line this time. Nearly halfway through this race, can anybody put a challenge to the 93? Just he's been dominating this race. He leads yet another lap here on the dirt. In next race, we head down to Charlotte for the Bank of America 200. It is the second intermediate race of the season. The first being at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Slope TV, for the uh, Stop Gambling Addiction 200 presented by Slope TV. And after, after the race at Charlotte, we head to Lucas Oil Raceway for the Lucas Oil 300. That is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun race for sure. Uh, we got, that will be our third short track race, unless you count Eldora as a short track. But then we head to the first road course of the season, Watkins Glen for the Horizon 150. Uh, trucks have not been to Watkins Glen, I believe, ever in in a uh, real racing. So we will see it, what they, what these drivers, what these drivers in NR 2003 can do at Watkins Glen. I believe that I will be using the 2010 version, and we are not using the boot. We're not running the boot layout because road course racing in NR2003 is a pain to sit through most of the time. So we're going to see if, it come, if, it'll, if it'll come down to strategy. But that's going to be a 15 lap race, potentially 20. It depends on the race lengths. I have not actually gone through and checked a lot of these race lengths. Uh, but then we had to talent Jake of Super Speedway for the Bojangles Southern 200. This is the second Super Speedway race of the season, and it's got to be at Talladega. Vega can be quite hectic. 
no, no, we'll see if it's like that. It's like that with these guys. Then we head to Canadian Tire Motorsports Park for Gary Owens' race north of the border. Uh, Gary Owen will actually be racing in that race in the 24 truck. It will be sponsored by himself. And his uh, YouTube channel, I will be sure to link his channel in the description of that video. Uh, and then, we head to the head to Rockingham, the season finale for 50 laps. It is the Bass Pro Shops finale race. It is definitely going to be an interesting one. Uh, Rockingham has not been used since, I believe, 2011 in any NASCAR National Series, so this is the return of The Rock. And you can bet yourself I will be making a Can You Smell What The Rock Is cooking joke. And we're going to try to cram these in. We're going to try and cram these races in, uh, midweek races on Wednesday, Thursday night. Uh, it's races on Saturday or Sunday. And if, if that all works out, Rockingham will uh, come out. Uh, Rockingham will be ran on my birthday. So, we will see. Uh, you, you will know when it comes up. But... But Devin Fair, we are past halfway, and he has led every single lap of this race. Uh, just no one can catch him. Let's... We saw some battles happening in the back of the field. Uh, let's go back there. No, no battles so far. However, Mateo Kobayashi has gotten around Logan Williams. Seems like, uh, Devin Fair is the master of the dirt. Uh, Golden can doesn't seem like he can catch Cody Smart. But then again, when you start on the outside, it's very hard to have a good race because you drop back immediately. Uh, Benjamin can't quite catch Dupain. So back to Dupain. Uh, Arthur Xavier here in the Zero for Rock Car Racing. Uh, let's actually go over your winners. So, starting fr from the DeVito Hub Clash, it is the driver running in second, Mitchell Collins. Uh, the Clash was not a points race. This was a, this was run at Daytona, and uh, Mitchell Collins took the race win. Uh, it, I don't believe it gave him any momentum coming into. Uh, the real race, and as he is, as the point system goes, um, first, 30 points, second, 27, third, 24, 20, no, third, yes, third, 24 points, fourth, 21 points, fifth, 18 points, sixth, fifth, 15 points, seventh, 12 points, eight, nine points, nine, and nine, six points. And from 10th to 15th, we get three points. And uh, Collins has only scored three points throughout every race. He sits in 14th with 12 points tied for uh, last with Jordan Stout. And then we go to the winner of the, of the first uh, race on the season, who sits in last. Nathan Smith uh, won the Mountain Dew 300. And where does he sit in points? He sits eighth. Uh, he went from the top, and he is slow, and it started at race two at Las Vegas, where he only grabbed 12 points, finishing seventh. And then he scored only three point, or er, then he scored nine points at uh, Myrtle Beach after a hectic, crazy race there. It was very. Please go watch that race. It was very crazy. And we are oh we're on lap 45 to 50. I had not been looking at the lap counter. Now let's go find your race leader. 
Devin Fair. Yeah, this has not been the best race for me. It's my uh, it's been a, about two, two, nearly three weeks since I've last recorded the race. This is a uh, I I need to get back into that rhythm. But Devin Fair definitely looks like he's going to win. Like unless unless he spins out, wrecks something. Devin Fair has this race won. goes through uh, turns three and four coming to three laps to go and we've actually only had two manufacturers win this season Chevrolet and Ram Dodge Ram whatever you want to call it and they've alternated every single race started off with Ram spent Chevy then another Ram then another Chevy then Ram won again at Bristol with uh, Bradley Ream, the Mopar kid. Now it looks like Chevy is going to grab their third win of the season. And here he comes out of turn four. White flag in the air for Devin Fair. Through turns one and two, Collins is not going to be able to catch him. Devin Fair has sealed the, almost sealed the deal through turns three and four. The 93 is going to win at Eldora and grab his first win, Robin Hood Racing's first win of the season. Utter domination from the 93. Now he's uh, going to do one more lap here. Well, that happened, so we are going to take a look at the finishing results. Nobody won a lap down here. That is very surprising. Uh, but Devin Fair is your winner. Mitchell Collins in second. Uh, and Christian Russell in third. And uh, Robin Hood Racing, the only team to get both their, car both their trucks in the top five. And then sitting after uh, Christian Russell is Nathan Orman in fourth. And then Jordan Stout in fifth. This is Stout's best result of the season. It is uh, very unfortunate that they have not done better. And then we have Nottingham Scott in sixth. Roman Fenway in 15th. Christian Holder, he is... He has seemed like the best part-timer this season. Um, and we actually saw Connor Hound, unfortunately. Uh, he was doing quite well at Myrtle Beach, but then uh, I believe Nathan Orman took him out. I believe Orman did take him out at on a restart. So it was unfortunate for them. They had a great run going, uh, but we're not dwelling on Myrtle Beach anymore. That, that's still the best race of the season. You had tempers flaring, passes for the lead, drivers beating, bang. It was, there was something for everyone, unless you were a driver who got wrecked. But after Christian Holder, you have your, you have your Bristol winner, Bradley Ream, in ninth. And the, uh, actually, the way we calculate points is we remove the part-timers from the equation and the driver gets the points for the position they are moved up in. However, uh, Nathan Smith, Mateo Kobayashi, Gray Galding, and Ryan Benjamin are guaranteed to have only three points. And, uh, after you go, and then after, uh, Bradley Ream, you have Arthur Xavier rounding out the top ten. In 10th, and Sebastian Dupain, uh, 11th. Unfortunate for him going from 2nd in the race. Uh, he was like, looked like he was the only truck that could have challenged Dream, unfortunately. Not, did not uh, turn out. He could not catch him. But he rounds out this race in 11th. And Ryan Benjamin in 12th. Cody Smart in 13th. Gray Golding in 14th. Patrick Starr in 15th. Mateo Kobayashi in 16th, Logan Williams in 17th in the 17 truck, 
That is something. And Nathan Smith rounds out the field in 18th. Unfortunate, ra unfortunate race for a lot of drivers. Uh, basically, anybody who started on the outside except for Christian Russell. That was... He only lost one position that race. Actually, no, I don't think he lost any positions. I believe he actually started. No, it was a uh, Robin Hood Racing 1 2. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this race here at Eldora for the second Crown Jewel event of the season. And this is uh, Kevin Jackson signing off.